he's gonna have to hold on to the Rook Champion ability to get past the King. He needs to hold it until he gets onto the pad here. So as soon as this building goes down, oh, early, early. Oh, no! Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric and welcome to the Assassin's War League. This war and this tournament is the semifinals. We have only four teams remaining. We have VTX, we have Strut Esports, we have Bad Zinger and Team XO still playing in this competition as they try to close it out. So let's see if either of these teams are able to push through today and survive. But it looks like we're starting off with a Sui Hero Lalo diving the king in through a double wall break into the scatter shot there while the queen gets pushed to the north to round in towards the town hall. The ground expo there is distracted by the skeleton spell. So the queen has a safe approach to the base there. Even has that ice golem on the outside, but the ice golem is not doing a lot there. Kind of needs that arch there to go down. Okay, it's going to go down now. The queen will make her way in towards the town hall as the king went really deep in the base there. The world champion joining with the king there. Pops her ability. That pushes her into the multi-inferno, but then she goes invisible. Stuck on the lava hound now. Doesn't want to be stuck in the hound there, but maybe he's able to get through that inferno. Maybe not. I don't know. That's a tough call right there. I know he's not going to make it. The CC's an overwhelm. The queen... On the other hand, is able to hold on to her ability all the way until she engages the town hall. She'll pop her ability and take it down. Also can pick up a handful of Teslas and stay outside of the base there, avoiding the town hall blast and poison. Looking pretty solid here so far for Avatar as he dives in the Warden towards the defensive queen directly so we can get the headhunters protected and get into that area with the haze on the right side he claps him with the scatter or the uh the stone slammer into the eagle artillery and he's able to clear that area out and if he can swarm into these multi infernos he's gonna be in a good spot he's got a lot of spell support he's got a lot of force moving he will get the blues to go directly from one multi inferno to the other they hit a whole bunch of traps there and the bulk of them go down but the dragon rider in one balloon and the warden survive he invests the rest of the spells there onto the inferno on the top edge and that will take it down ladies and gentlemen it is a triple bad singer opening up strong here in this semi-finals elimination match Ooh, do you think um who do you guys think is going to be in, win the other semifinals? Do you think it'll be VTX or the new golden ticket holders of the Clash of Clans World Championships throughout esports? I mean, if I didn't sway you there, I don't know what will. But I really feel like whoever face, whoever wins this ends up having to fight them. And <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. Sob is live. Kick us off here for Team XO. Where's my Papa Magamba fans at in the chat here, guys? Show them some love. Let's see. If him and his team are able to beat Badzinger today. Badzinger just took out Tompanai Empire in the round before. So we'll see. They can now fell Team XO. But Saab is a strong attacker. We'll see what we can do here with this kill squad into Lalo. He's got the Log Lodger come down with the King and the Queen. No Raw Champion or Warden being used here. But the Log Launcher will dive in here and get this, this Multi-Inferno out of the middle base. Taking some damage though as it makes its way into the base there. The arch tower has been locked onto it for quite a while. It does it does get the last log thrown and it does take the multi inferno down. So it got the values looking for there, and now the Yetis has stepped into a tanking position for the defensive Grand Warden, which is going to assist the Queen as she continues to make her way forward. Yetis are walking away now, but the Yeti might jump over there right in time to get that sweeper out of the way. That's gonna be really helpful for the Lalo. World Champion over on the right side as he has some force going to the defensive Queen. He's got the Headhunters under the poison and they escape it, but they turn back. He pops the Queen to get him to turn back and they're just chilling over there. The Headhunters are running loose here. He doesn't have a poison for them. He's going to have to find a way to deal with them. The Hound is not as big of a problem here, but if his Warden gets wrecked by this set of headhunters that'd be a major problem he drops in a couple minions and a balloon to give a little bit of distraction but the minions get targeted he has to drop in more has costed him time has costed him cleanup here definitely would have preferred to get the cc dealt with he's got the cc under control now okay he's still gonna get the defensive heroes down though and so with the two headhunters that he has he has to take out the royal champion and take out the defensive queen his only standing air defense is completely opposite of his entry Ooh, I'm not feeling so hot about this one, guys, but he does go after the defensive queen as his priority there. The Ice Hound ends up freezing her up as it crosses through and doesn't really get a lot of value. There comes the Headhunters. 
trying to maximize the value of the headhunters because he needs them to not only take the queen down, not only take the world champion down, but he also has to protect them while he takes the town hall down with the pack of balloons as well. So they do cross through. He does have them locked onto the, oh, they just took a scatter shot hit. They're gonna go down. The world champion is still standing and she's gonna be a big, big problem for him here. Does he have a way to get her down? The electric owl is locking onto her now. Which owl is trying to chip her way there while she's picking off all kinds of balloons here. Does he get that multi down? He does get the multi down at least. Lost this road champion. This is falling quickly. The defensive road champion holds the line and is not going to let him go through on this one. He needed to get either one of the heroes down with this main force there. Like he had his queen walk on him and with the queen walking out to the left side, she wasn't there to support with the fighting of the headhunters initially and with the defensive queen takedown. So she was just working along the outside of the base there. That really, really hurt him a lot. The heroes obviously need to go where you need them to go. Otherwise, these attacks have a relatively low success rate. So in that case, it is going to be a lead for Badzinger. Padalino coming in for Badzinger, Inferno Dragon Riders as they establish their lead and will try to maintain it. Coming in with a baby dragon to form the funnel next to the town hall. Just use the skeleton spells out in advance there. Make sure you get them down very, very quickly and early so that you can have the protection as you make your way into the base. And then the ward ability comes out to protect the blimp as it sails in. The blimp is going to form the funnel for the town hall area there while he's actively pushing the Inferno Dragons in. So funnel on the fly. But he does have to burn multiple spells there as he hits some traps. He needs to get the town hall down. Oh, he misses it. Oh, Padalino. The traps. There are so many traps right there. And it shut down his blimp. But he's still got some dragon riders going that way there. He's investing all kinds of spells there. But is that too many spells investing in that area? At least the Infer Dragons and Dragon Riders were able to avoid the Town Hall Blast and Poison by sidestepping it. They go all the way around there. Pick up the air defense on the far left side of the base. Or try to at least. And uh, don't quite go. No, he does get it. On the last strike. Okay. Next threats are the Royal Champion and the Defensive Grand Warden. All these expos surrounding them is uh, going to be a giant hassle. Got a queen ability, has a world champion ability, but he's out of skeleton spells. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not going to happen for him. He had to invest so many of his critical spells into not protecting the Inferno Dragons, but rather to take the Town Hall down. The traps were perfectly able to stop that one there, so he'll power through as far as he can, but his queen is not going to be able to go the distance here. This expo is going to absolutely shut her down right now, and this multi Inferno going to burn up all of her protection from those archers. Looks like it'll be an 81%. I'll pass it back over to Team XO. And now, if they triple, they take the lead. Sam is live. Sam coming in with Electro Dragons. This team is known for being some of the strongest Electro Dragon attackers in all of Clash of Clans. Papa Gamba likes to gloat about it a lot. Well, let's see if they can make it happen here. Sam, right on par with him. There comes the E-Drags. The Queen will work on the bottom uh, side of the funnel there while the the Yeti formed the top side of the funnel. We've got two air defenses down out of the right out of the gate here. Two air defenses on the far back side of the base. So now when you see the air defenses spread wide to the outsides like that, you can get some of them out while you're forming the funnel. You can rush the remaining ones. But the biggest thing and why this is a good base for this strategy is these other air defenses are so far to the back side of the base that your Roar Champion can sweep through and take them out. So I really foresee this going well. He does get the CC destroyed and he got the Town Hall as well. So far, so good. Rage up and take out that single Inferno. The e drags that are alive are sitting pretty strong. All the defensive heroes are down. Here comes the Roar Champion starting the back side there. The Queen will be able to handle the air defense at the bottom. There are two e drags no three e drags still alive up at the top of the base there and with the Roar Champion also getting the support of the freezes that are protecting those e drags he's looking pretty solid to carry through on this one so the Electro Dragons the perfect call for this base this is crushed he's got plenty to finish off there and he can basically swag his queen ability nicely done Sam making those e drags rip through these bases again and again makes it look easy but it's just about identifying the base it'll work on and then making them pay for putting those wide air defenses that are put like that to try to counter the Lalo heavy meta right now. Because you think about it, you put the air defenses wide to the outside, and then the Lalo doesn't have good anchor points for hounds in anywhere useful, and it kind of messes those attacks up. But you make it strong to one attack, and it makes it weak to another.
Anno live for Badzinger Inferno Dragon Riders. Trying to break it out again. It wasn't successful on the last one because they trapped so heavily around the town hall. We'll see if they can make it happen on this one here. Just using a couple Inferno Dragons near the town hall to just collapse in towards the funnel to come in on the flank of the town hall. Notice how we, they always come in on the town hall edge of the base and they do the short approach with the blimp to go get the town hall down and they form the funnel on the fly, but they don't just take their funnel for granted. They make sure that they get the outside buildings there next to the town hall out of the way so that they can push everything as much as possible into the middle of the base. A couple of them for dragons leak out to the outside. Not a problem. No drama on the town hall takedown on this one here. He's got the CC that is outside of the poison at the moment. Not the best placement on that poison, so that'll be a bit of a problem here, but seeming to continue to make its way through fairly smooth. And you'll get this. He needs to get this Inferno or this Inferno Dragon here to lock on to the Royal Champion. And he does get that lock on now. And he's got this skeleton spell to tie her up. He does take her down. So much damage output. If you can just get your targets to hold still and give some distraction to keep these Inferno Dragons alive. And looks like he's in a pretty good spot here. He's got a, a big, heavy back end compartment. But he has this Royal Champion still. He puts the Royal Champion from the right side. Skeleton spell comes down for her. Was that the right call here? Would have been more beneficial to put the Royal Champion at the bottom and support the other heroes and try to get the cross tanking or to collapse in backwards and meet them at the end. It looks like it's working out okay here. The Queen steps in. She gets the scatter shot down. The Royal Champion was able to get through that single Inferno. She still has her ability. Queen still has her ability. The Queen ability is going to get some crazy value here as he pops that RC ability and that Queen ability takes out the remainder of the defenses. Ladies and gentlemen, Badzinger puts the triple up here. Put the pressure back over to Team XO. But Team XO does have the percentage advantage after that last attack there. So we'll see if they can hold their advantage. If they can triple again. But a nice stack here from Eno. Drunken Beer. No, Bear. <laughs> Drunken Bear. Coming in with some Hydra. Out of Team XO. Gonna go with a very similar approach to what we just saw out of the... The Inferno Dragons, almost exactly the same approach here. We come in on the flank of the Town Hall, but then broadside the whole area and send the blimp after the Town Hall. Looks like he's got a pretty good entry. He's going to need to get to this Eagle Artillery before too long, but keep an eye on all the defensive heroes. They are one of the biggest threats here. If you can get the Dragons to take them out without losing too many Dragon Riders arriving to them by themselves, then you can do some really good work here. But he's got the defensive king engaged with his king. He'll pop his bullet up there. His king's gonna surge down the alleyway there. If the king takes the Roar Champion, he's in a really strong position because all those Dragon Riders that are moving through the area right there would just all be picked up by the Roar Champion if the king didn't get those down. So now they are safe. He can raise them up. They can push all the way to the multi Inferno. And now his Roar Champion can move through while his queen with her ability and Attacked and her unicorn still alive is going to fight out the lava hand and she was given the cross tanking for the world champion as well Skeleton spells on the back side. He's got one air defense left here But the dragons are avoiding the range of that air defense He freezes up to give these skeletons a chance to spawn a little bit more there without getting picked off But the world champion is so delayed in arriving to that area all these Spells that are being used here not getting the highest value But they are protecting the dragons which are able to step in and get the scatter shot out of the way there So with the champion, she's gonna go the rest of the way here. She may Take some damage as she makes her way through the ground skellies there, but that's fine He's got the cleanup. It's a triple and team XO puts another one on the board A couple archers come down to get some distraction the backside getting through that cannon almost didn't make it through But the Queen one way or another with her ability attack there and her unicorn still following along Would have easily been able to clean it up if the world champion wasn't able to so team XO Get another one on the board Hugo Stiglitz coming in with a mass hog attack here with the Queen charge Okay, when you do the hogs Without the miners, it can be it can leave them more vulnerable to splash damage because it doesn't spread out the pack there like a hybrid does. But the advantage of this is he doesn't need to worry about a funnel because they only go after defenses. So he'll dive in the queen to go up to the north side of the base there. She can round the corner and pick up that expo. He can have something go in afterwards and go get that eagle artillery down. There's only ground expo next to it. And he's picking up that 
That battle builder almost got the battle builder down right there. He could put the dragon rider directly out of the battle builder and then have it go off to the left and go get the eagle artillery down. And it might even be able to go all the way into the other expo here. That would be some incredible value there. But the eagle artillery alone is a lot by itself. It took a black mine. It's going to survive that. It will get the eagle artillery down. The eagle's not activated yet. As he starts to drop in more troops there, the king comes in the top flank and will push the queen more directly to the base there. She doesn't have a jump, but she's going with the log launcher to start to push through these walls to get passed into the scatter shot and into the town hall. Did not get that expo down with the dragon rider after it hit that black mine, but that's fine. The queen steps her way through, picks up the expo. She should take the turn now and go into the scatter shot, especially if the king takes that storage while she's fighting off the defensive CC. Did her a lot of damage there, but she's hanging in just fine. The Super Bean step up in the poison. Got that under control. Looking solid here. King pops his ability. Unfortunately, his ability is going to lose every single Barbarian to that bomb tower. And held back by the Tornado Trap. He's got the Yetis taking the lead there for the Queen as she goes into the single Inferno. That'll get them down. The Rage Assist. The Town Hall will drop right now. The Queen will continue to march her way through the base over there. He's got the Hogs coming in heavy for the bottom side there with the... Warden ability protecting the headhunters and then the heal spell able to power through the defensive queen and the Tesla farm and all of the heavy defenses in that area of the base. Queen looking like she's gonna go the distance here. Hugo Stiglitz made that look easy. Just walking this queen from completely opposite the town hall, crosses the entirety of the base there, and she moves lightning fast here, but he has to beat the clock still. Now the biggest problem that he's gonna have here is he's gonna have to hold on to the Royal Champion ability to get past the king. He needs to hold it until he gets onto the pad here. So as soon as this building goes down, oh, early, early. Oh no! That was a shot early! He makes the king invisible so we can bypass him. Everybody's searching their way across. They get stuck. The hogs are going through. He's got it. Oh, almost made a critical mistake there. He is counting the buildings, but the shield will hit the defensive king if the king is down and there's no defenses to detract the shield, so... <laughs> that was almost a big mistake. Should have held onto that ability for just a slight amount longer. But he still pulls through, and Bad Seeker puts the pressure back to Team XO. Yash is live. They're gonna leave Papa Magamba to close out the war here. We have another Hydra attack, but this one... He's got a log... He's got a log launcher. What? He's got a log launcher. He's got a lot. Okay, he swaps to a blimp. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? What's he going to do with a log launcher and a dragon attack? But he now sends in the dragons, put the hound down, but the dragon was already getting targeted by the air defense. Hound takes a black mine. Delaying his warden for a bit there with the hound providing the tanking. He did lose one dragon, a little bit mistimed on that, but that's fine. He'll pop the ward ability, he'll send this blimp through, and now we'll see what kind of damage this blimp can do as it arrives into the town hall area, taking all kinds of traps all, all along the path there, but it does arrive in safety. And inside is lots of sneaky goblins, goblins, and super wizards are going to take out that section of the base there. He did pull the defensive CC, but he got the tunnel down, he got the inferno down. The CC is drawn off to the left side where he can fight it, and it's not going to be a problem out there. He's going to be able to fight it with relatively low damage. He's just got to get through that Roar Champion, that multi inferno, but he freezes them up until he can make his way through that. He did get good value of the blizzard, but was it enough? The dragons are, I'm, I'm miscalculating how much this hound was causing problems over there because he took a lot of damage, he lost a lot of troops there while that hound was distracting his troops. So that was gonna be a bit of a problem here, but he does have a skeletal spell, generally some skeletons uh, stay in front of the queen here as the Roar Champion continues to make a way forward. The defensive queen's still on the backside. He's got a bunch of freezes. He's gonna lose the dragon up top. He got the storage down and the storage is one of the buildings that he Potentially wouldn't have been able to reach. I guess that Inferno is also a problem for the same respect. But he's got a lot of force going to the defensive queen right now. Invisibility protects. He's still got the freezes. He'll start to freeze up the scatter shot. Where a champion will continue to make her way through. Good spell management here from Yash so far. That's the RC ability. Invisibility comes down as well. The queen gets pushed to the inside of the base there. She can pop her ability and take down the expo and that Inferno. But she holds on to it for a little bit longer. He pops that RC ability. 
Got Skelly's holding him up here. Needs to get that scatter shot down. She's under a lot of fire. She takes it and into the Tesla. He's got the giant plums going off here, but he's got just enough to get it done. Yash was looking a bit shaky on that one, but he pulls through in the end. The heroes wrap all the way through, and his spell management on the backside barely pulls him through all the traps. Guys, it is a percentage lead into Team XO's favor. The winner of this will move on to face the winner of Strut Esports and VTX in the Grand Finals. Dima is live! Another Inferno Dragon Rider attacker. No, wait. Not Dragon Riders. It is all Inferno Dragons. They have been busting out these Inferno Dragons all across the war here and now Trying to shine. He's got the blimp. Gonna go in here and take the town hall down. Safe, fast approach there with a decently cleared uh, area traps with the blooms that were able to initially establish that funnel. The goblins take the town hall down. Do they pull the CC? No, they do not. Maybe he can avoid pulling the CC if the Inferno Dragons are approaching through the Eagle Artillery. Honestly, it's a very compact area over there. A really good spot for Inferno Dragons to get into the base there. And if he can just keep his heroes. Okay, not what I was expecting. Definitely not what I was expecting. Inferno Dragons coming at the very bottom of the base there. And we'll eventually get that Eagle Artillery down, I guess. But he needs to keep in mind that his heroes need to stay away from the CC range until he destroys it. We'll see what comes out of there. But he's got the first scatter shot down, engaging the Inferno, not getting through the Eagle Artillery. Eagle Artillery is going to be a big problem for him here as his strikes at these packs. It's another... Skeletal Spell down on the right side there to give the heroes protection as they make their way through to the defensive king and that scatter shot. But he's got a lot of force moving through the middle of the base here, keeping his heroes away from the CC range for him now. He's got uh, Infernal Dragons. Everyone that approaches that area end up getting picked off, but he did have a couple split off and get the Eagle Artillery down, so that's a really good sign. At least he's not going to be taking that sustained fire all the way through. He does now get the Lava Hound that draw out, and that's what he's trying to avoid. Okay, this is going to be a tough finish here. He's got lots of spell support here, but he has to keep his queen alive. She has her unicorn or no? All right, he gets the hound to come down to assist. Get the skeleton spell up ahead there with the world champion, making her push there as he powers through the defensive CC and get the hound under control. The queen has to go through a wall. The king's on the outside. Our champion has lots of spell support here from the skeletal spells to freezes, but she's under a lot of fire. The next one, he can't keep all the damage off of her. He has the invisibility. Does he use it? Come on, come on, hold through here, hold through. There's the invisibility. He's got to get the defensive queen out of the way here. If he doesn't get the queen out of the way here, he's in a lot of trouble. He freezes up, but he misses the queen, and his world champion goes down. Oh no, Dima! How high can he get the percentage now? This queen will keep on powering through. She has her ability, and she'll at least get the defensive queen out of the way here. He'll get through the wall. He'll pick up a couple extra buildings here, and he'll climb it into the 90s, but with a percentage disadvantage, this is a massive opportunity for the final attacker from Team Exo, which I have been teasing it the whole time. Is not Papa Magamba. He's not playing today. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All right, well, it's his team, though. It's his team. That their threshold to cross here to take this win is 86%. It is Manjeet for the final attack here. A queen charge into dragons. Wall break at the bottom of the base here. Baby dragon forms a funnel. Queen will make her way in, finding some Teslas on her way in. One looks fairly clean, though. And I think she's going to walk her way into that wall break and into the scatter shot. So far, so good. Lots of Tesla's in the area. No black bombs going up, but a couple of red bombs. Oh, wait. Ah, queen, queen, queen. No, queen. Queen, what are you doing? He makes it invisible, but the queen rounds to the wizard tower. Oh, does he have to? Oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's okay. Queen turn. No, she's not. She's not. The scatter shot's going to target the healers. He puts in the world champion to try to assist and keep the scatter shot off of his healers. And that'll at least save the healers and push the queen up to the top edge of the base here. But now well, what do we do from here? This is a problem. This is a problem. He needs 86% to lock in the win here. Queen will get the Seagull Artillery down before it activates. So at least he's got that. But sacrificing for a champion and cost him big. 
He may be risking a one star on this one here, but it doesn't matter. It is three star or lose. Or to me, it's 86%. It, it doesn't matter. Just get 86%. It doesn't matter if you triple. Just get the dragons in. You'll rage them up as they move in the top of the base there. The queen will make her way back towards the middle now, getting cut off by the dragons and forced in. He'll fight off the defensive CC. Looks like it is a Lava Hound CC and Headhunters. He poisons it up here. He needs to get the Town Hall down. He's getting the percentage racked up here pretty nicely. He's able to keep his Queen Charge moving, which is really, really helping. Here comes a Blimp. Flip needs to reach that Town Hall. Doesn't have the protection of a Ward ability, but the Dragons have cleared a decent chunk of the base there to give it a very small amount of ground to cover there to make it to the Town Hall. And it does arrive. It takes the Town Hall down. He's just got to get another 15 buildings here. And he's got a minute to rack it up here. But the Queen, under heavy fire, is she going to go down? Oh, she's hanging on by a thread over there. But the defensive Queen steps up. He pops his ability and... The queen steps away, so she uses her entire ability on the walls. 80% here is about to be crossed, but he's got the sneaky goblins. He can pick up some collectors on the backside. The warden's going to get picked off here by the air defense. The dragon gets picked off first, so it misses the trash on the outside. The queen trying to power through. 81%. He's going to get two with the sneaky goblins. But can he get this? He might be able to pick up the cannon. Oh, it's going to be close. He needs eight. He needs four buildings in 20 seconds. Queen steps through. But she's not going to have enough with that expo on her to get both buildings. No, she does. She got both. Oh, my God. The archers. The archers. They got it. 86% of the dot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Team XO has defeated Badzinger by two buildings. After that attack went horribly, horribly wrong. 13 to 13. And Team XO is moving on to the grand finals of the Assassin's World League Cup.